All right, guys, what's good? February 26th, Saturday morning. I got nothing going on here today, so I figured let's jump into the weekly watch list video for the week of February 28th. Uh, so welcome to March. Uh, but we'll dive in here, guys. Before we do, though, uh, you know, I pinned a... Uh, you know, I pinned a comment here on uh, the channel. just want to read this off here real quick. So this is on last night's uh, video that I put out last night. Uh, but let me read the comment here real quick, right? When you watch these videos, make sure you're doing so free of any bias. Uh, same thing we want to do when we're looking at the charts, right? So for the last five weeks or so, you know, eight for nine on short positions that I've closed. Get a few open here. But the point is that if this market starts to print buy signals, I'll be ready to crush the upside. But I'm taking these shorts and I'm looking for more shorts because of the structure. To me, it's the only thing that matters is the structure. So with that being said, we'll take a look at a few things here. The structure does suggest if you bought calls on Thursday or Friday, you probably got a little bit more upside. So I think in a very short-term sense, week, maybe two weeks here, yeah, I think the very, very short-term bottom is in. Want to focus on structure, though. All right, so lastly here, if you think the market uh, has put in a bottom long term, let me know in the comments why. Like, what are you seeing? What are you seeing in the price action? What are you seeing in the charts? What are you seeing in the structure, the indicators? Uh, let me know what you're seeing. Let me know potentially what am I missing. Because if you leave a comment and, you know, it's just like, the bottom is in. That doesn't really, like, do us any good. You know, not much of a contribution, so to say, to uh, the community here. It's probably a bit more your talk in your book. All right, so food for thought there. I'm always open to getting different traders' opinions. Uh, I mean, hell, that's half the reason I make these videos. So if you think the market put in a long-term bottom, and we're going to go back to the all-time highs, let me know why. What you seeing here? And I'll let you know what I'm seeing. Uh, but in terms of this coming week, like I said, I think if you bought some calls on Thursday or Friday, I think you've got a bit more upside here. But the major thing is, and as ridiculous as that short squeeze was, and I think you got a bit more here, it just doesn't change the structure of these weekly charts. So make sure you understand that. I'm trading the weekly trend here. Not that daily back and forth bullshit. I'm trading the weekly trend. So under the weekly 21 EMA, with a negative histogram, we haven't seen this since COVID, I'm going to look to short the bounces. Just understand where I'm coming from. This is no different. So if you're calling for a long-term bottom right now, it maybe you're correct, but you're basically, you know, it's like back here, you're calling for the high. Maybe we're just pulling back the support before we rip into a new high. Pull back the support. So last year, it was just not an easy market to try to call for the top in. So the only point I'm trying to make is there's going to be oversold bounces. They're very tradable, but from a bigger picture perspective right now all we're getting is a bounce into weekly resistance potentially and i think it's a spot you want to short at and then in terms of the daily charts it's very very similar to what you got back here big ass flush big ass bounce you stabilize a bit and roll right back over i just think that's the uh, the part of the ebbs and flows that we're going through right now Big move to the downside. Nasty, nasty short covering squeeze. I'm going to look for it to roll back over. So in terms of the levels I would suggest here, from a weekly charts perspective, I'd like the short bounces into the weekly AEMAs. And mind you, if the indexes start to close back above the weekly 21, then I think you've got a shift of structure. But right now, these are bearish weekly squeezes. And the QQQ is already releasing all that energy. So you're two weeks into firing the squeeze here. So maybe the bottom is in, but at least be mindful of the fact until we get back above the 21, you're fighting that momentum in the squeeze. Not always uh, the easiest thing to do. So I would like to short these things at the uh, the weekly moving averages. Uh, for IWM, that's 205 to 208-ish. That's what I'm looking for this week. In terms of some lower time frames. The, uh, the name of the game here, since we started the breakdown in uh, January, has been bounce back towards the hourly 200 SMA and then roll over. Right? And we get to these extreme oversold conditions. 
then you get your big ass short cover in uh you know slaughter fest typically back to the 200 before we flush then you get the pot back to the 200 before we puke it up so the iwm here is back near that 200 and this starts to line up with your weekly moving averages as well so you've got some good resistance here if the bulls are really going to take control of the wheel again you look to get back above this weekly moving averages for the s p 500 take a look here at the spy same same thing here. We start to flush in January. Uh, that's when I start to get the daily sell signals. And we just get super, super oversold. And then you get the bounce into the falling 200. Then we flush, bounce into the 200. We flush, bounce towards the 200, flush. I think we could get there. So again, if you're long right now, I think you got a runway. I think you got a runway up towards this 440, 445-ish level. So for the S&P, that's your hourly 200, and that also lines up with your daily 21 EMA and your daily 200 SMA. So basically, like 450 to 440, it's a pretty big range. That's the move I would, excuse me, that's the move I'd want to shorten to on the S&Ps. And uh, for the Q-tips here, but notice how this is all based on structure. I haven't said anything about the Fed. I haven't said anything about Russia versus Ukraine. Like, this is just structure. In the queues here, they've, relatively speaking, been a little bit weaker. Um, so these flushes, you don't quite get back to the 200. Uh, at least not yet. But that 350-ish level, that lines up with your uh, your daily 21. So those are the levels there, guys. Hourly 200s, daily 21s, weekly AEMAs, they're all generally in the same neighborhood. So that's the bounce I want to short into. And if we were above the 21, and there were positive histograms, and we were, you know, seeing that 21 EMA pointing to the upside, and the stacked EMAs, I would want to do nothing but buy the dip. So if you look at the inverse, right, the inverse of the QQQ on a weekly chart, what would I want to do here? Got a daily squeeze, fires to the upside, I'd want to buy the next pullback. Bullish daily squeeze fires to the upside. It wouldn't make all that much sense to want to short that pullback. You'd want to buy that pullback. Right? So just understand, right now, getting heavily, heavily long, in terms of like a longer-term swing trade, at the current moment, getting heavily long this market is very much like getting heavily short on these pullbacks towards the weekly 21. So you start to short the shit out of the market. You're shorting it. You're shorting it. You're going against the trend. You're getting a bit too caught up in your daily charts, your 30-minute charts. You're getting short right into major weekly support. That essentially is what you're doing here if you're getting long. This all changes, guys, right? And I'm going to start to play this thing to the upside and crush it if we're back above the weekly 21. But to get long, 30, 60 days till expiration, load the boat on calls right now, you are taking the same trade as shorting the market on that flush to the 21, on that flush, on that flush, on that flush, on that flush. So I hope we're all on the same page here, right? It's not an opinion thing. It's not, um, oh my God, now the Fed's not going to raise interest rates. I'm just playing the chart in front of me. And that's how 2020, most of 2021, we're making money relatively easily wait for the pullback and on every one of these pullbacks i can promise you you got cnbc doing markets in turmoil specials everyone's getting bearish people are yelling at me why are you waiting to buy the dip because the daily charts get ugly as hell it feels scary it feels like oh my goodness things are changing here the weekly chart paints you such a cleaner picture it's like nah for now just pull them back to your weekly support so these daily charts right now, as long as we are under the weekly 21, going to be crazy repetitive with that. These daily charts will bounce. If you're short, it starts to feel scary. The narrative starts to change. Everyone's getting long, but this hasn't changed shit about that structure. If that structure doesn't change, I'm not telling you not to play the market to the upside. If you're getting long here, I think you've got some nice profits coming early this week, unless... You know, the world explodes over the weekend. 
there is a lot of money to make on these oversold bounces. But that's the key word right there. You're trading an oversold bounce. Take it into resistance. I think you take profits. And then you sit back and see how things digest. A lot of money to be made there. But hopefully that offers a, a perspective you might be able to appreciate. Under the weekly 21. Under the weekly 8. Negative histogram. No stacked EMAs is the polar opposite of this recent trend. Where you're above the weekly 21 with positive histograms, positively stacked EMAs. So with that kind of bullish structure, the closer we get to that weekly 21, the more difficult it gets to try to load up on shorts. That bounce typically crushes you. So I think until we get a weekly close back above the 21, that's what we're looking at here. Finally got a shift of trend, right? So these things, they're not going to unfold overnight. For the first time in almost two years, we find ourselves shifting structure here and shifting momentum. If we can't clear back above the 21, I think this pattern continues into March and April. Same thing for the S&P on the weekly chart. And the same thing for the QQQ on the weekly chart. And the IWM and the Dow. So that's my focus here, guys. I think you got a bit more upside potentially coming this week. I think at a minimum, your S&Ps, your Qs, your Dow Jones should be able to test your uh, 21 EMA. So we'll see if that's the case. Uh, what would be very, very bearish at the open on Monday is if we're back under the January lows. When they squeeze shorts to this extent, and there's plenty more room, I won't say plenty more room, but there's, there's room left until you get it back up towards resistance. If they lose control again, right, we're right back under January lows. Uh, like, I think this thing gets ugly, ugly. But I think a bit more likely, uh, you know, news aside, is you rally into resistance here. So that's my suggestion. If you're long right now, maybe look to take your profits or scale out. Then see how things start to settle. From my perspective, this current bounce is as brutal as it is if you're getting short down here. I think this is what we're seeing. Crazy oversold. Sentiment just gets like way too freaking bearish. Oversold bounce. Trend continues. What's that trend continuing in? The path of least resistance suggested by the weekly chart. So all things that shall play out over the next few weeks. But if we're back above weekly moving averages, there's buy signals. I'm looking to get long. Always going to play this structure. Now, can we play this move to the upside next week? You've got some options here. So, you know, in that bullish market last year, one of the bigger mistakes I made was when I would try to get short, right? So basically, when I would try to short during those dips to the weekly 21, I was going about it the wrong way. I was putting on too much risk, and I wasn't really utilizing strategies of the good risk versus reward. So I think what you would want to do here if you think the S&P's got some more room and you're looking to play it, you're looking to cover some hedges, I think you're looking for something along the lines of this. You go SPY, you go Friday's expiration, which is the... Uh, what's next Friday going to be? The 4th. So if you think we're going to bounce into resistance, come play something like this. A 345, 350 call debit spread. So if you can lock this up for a buck here, let's check this out on the analyze tab. If you could grab this for say a buck and change, and let's say into Thursday's expiration, we are, let's go, say yeah, uh, say into Wednesday, we're bouncing up towards 440, 450-ish, you're going to more than double your money. So say you got a short position that expires in March or April. And you're thinking, all right, I, I think we're still going to head lower, but not until they're done crushing the shorts here. Maybe you got 5% risk on your short positions. You know, this is the kind of thing you can risk 1% of your account. And if that, you catch that pop, you know, you're moving the account forward by one, one and a half, two percent 
If you can get a couple of those on, uh, under your belt, it might cover all your risk on your short. So that's something to take into consideration. Um, out the money debit spreads for Friday's expiration on the S&P and I think on the Qs, you know, you target probably that 350 level. So let's see, what would you do here on the Qs? Maybe a 348, 350? Yeah, great risk reward. So out the money call debit spreads. Depending where we open on Monday, they might be a nice way to, you know, from a low risk, uh, high reward perspective, play a little bit of this, uh, what I think is going to be the leftovers of last week's squeeze. So that's one option there. But in terms of hedging, right, to me hedging starts when you first take your entry. And I'll show you what I mean here so it makes sense. Like the whole, like when, when do people start hedging when they're short? Typically, they start thinking about hedging their shorts when the shorts start to get squeezed. So the first thing you want to focus on here, if you're going to play a market to the downside, is don't put yourself in a position to be a part of the short squeeze. So if you're getting short down here, you're, you're part of the short squeeze. If you're getting short on these bounces, your entry is above the short squeeze. You're kind of up here in the trees, looking down at all the mayhem and all the bloodshed back on the ground. So the first thing to do in terms of, hey, how can we hedge against these you know, crazy-ass short squeezes? Take some good entries. Um, so basically, right, since we got sell signals here and since this daily squeeze fired short back in January, and mind you, I have two short positions open. But over the last, call it, uh, you know, four or five weeks here, on the shorts that I've taken that I've closed, I'm eight for nine. So 90% uh, percent win rate here because I'm taking good entries. That's the key. So I'm shorting Nike at that 21 EMA. And then I'm taking profits on the flush. I'm not trying to get uh, wrapped up in a short squeeze. So I'm shorting that pop up here. The short squeeze, ironically, is what's going to give you your next good entry. Folks who are getting short down here at like 132-ish, they're getting just slaughtered. Right? They're getting spanked with that paddle. If that takes it back to the 21 and then it fails, that's where we look to short again. So that's how we nailed Nike. Um, we nailed Uber. Now, to be transparent, so if we waited like five minutes here, this thing would have ripped against us. So we kind of bottom ticked that one with the exit. But there's the entry. So even if we didn't get the exit and we got caught up in this short squeeze, it's still below our entry. So I don't enjoy giving back open profits. Um, and believe me, I did that this week. So you had to be quick as hell here with your exits. I mean, like, with the IWM, you had maybe... <laughs> what? <laughs> you had, like maybe 30 seconds or a minute on that giant gap down to take profits, and then she, then she rips. Yeah, so, you know, never fun to get back open profits. Um, you know, down here at the bottom, I'm up like 7000 bucks on that, uh, that IWM short. Uh, I'm up like 1000 bucks now. I'm up like 2 k on, uh, on Apple. Now I'm flat. Uh, and on an Amazon short I had nice profits. Now I'm like break even. So not enjoyable. Much better position to be in than I'm shorting the IWM down here. And I'm digging myself a massive hole on that short squeeze. So to give back some open profits is a, uh, it's an annoyance. It's kind of like getting pinched. Like somebody pinches you, it kind of, like it's that irritating type of pain that quickly tends to fade. Getting short here and getting caught up in that bounce, that's like getting hit by, it's like get, getting hit by a train. Tough to recover from that. So that's a, kind of the first way you can protect yourself against the short squeezes here. And that's how you can trade free of emotion. So, like just based on some of the comments I get, based on some of the emails I get, and mind you, I've been there, I can just tell a lot of y'all are trading in this market like super emotionally. And I can just tell in some of the comments, like, it's a natural thing for people to want to go to bat 
for their positions. You got to see this stuff with no bias. Right? It's just structure. You're just playing ebbs and flows. Uh, what the hell is this? Right. So if you're short IWM up here, and you got some nice open profits. Now it's kind of coming back towards you know small profits break even. See that for what it is. The trade hasn't unfolded yet. You sure that a shitty looking weekly squeeze, it still looks the same. You'd want to add on bounces here. If you're just looking at this structurally, there's no right, there's no panic. Your account isn't going back. You're not in the hole. You're not losing your account. You're not blowing up. You just got some open profits going back towards break even. Where this all becomes so much more emotional is if you're living and breathing that open PNL. Because on Thursday morning at the open, you know, now I'm tailored with an extra twelve, thirteen thousand dollars to my name. Right. So if you start thinking like that, you start attaching that open profit like to your identity for the day, you go from like maximum euphoria to the opposite side of that spectrum. Right? So this now when you when you're thinking like that. And this is the stuff that happens without, you know, we don't even know this is happening. But you go from crazy euphoria that all starts going against you, right? you got so much going on in your headspace right now, none of which has anything to do with the structure of the charts. Right? You're total panic mode because you're attached to that open P&L. All things I want y'all to keep in, uh, you know, keep in mind here. It, this game ain't that serious. <laughs> You short a good structure, the trade works or it doesn't. Ho hopefully that makes sense, right? If you short something that doesn't work, it shouldn't be the end of the world. I mean, so maybe some of y'all are taking some big-ass risk here. Um, and kudos if you are. If you're risking 2.5-3% of your account on your trades, it can only get so ugly. So let the structure play out. Stay out of the... Uh, Stay out of the uh, the headspace. But that's what I got for y'all here. Uh, we'll go through the sectors. Semi still look like garbage. Uh, sell signals. I don't like the financials. We got sell signals here. This thing's just too. Maybe you play it back up to forty-one, but this is just range bound. Uh, the industrials here. It's a bounce back to your twenty-one. So that's still bearish for now. Utilities. It's not bullish by any stretch, but it's back above the 21, so a slight improvement. Slight improvement in healthcare. Consumer discretion still looking pretty rough. Uh, consumer staples, XLP, slight improvement, but nowhere near bullish. And energy. Top dog. Top dog. So your Chevrons, your Devons, your LNGs, they all still look pretty good here. But to me, the chart of focus is the weekly charts on the indexes. And if we're under the weekly 21 EMAs, I want to short it. Because as long as we're under the 21, with the squeeze building negative momentum, that continues to be the case here that I think three, four, five, six, eight weeks from now, this is the pattern we start to see. Same pattern you got over here. Just the opposite direction. One last thing here, I know we covered it yesterday. Uh, take it with a grain of pepper. I'm not going to bet the ranch based on it, but interesting if nothing. We're uh, we're getting the first buy signal that we're working on here. First buy signal on the VIX since October, November of 2008. And you had your financial crisis back in 08. Um, but for me, mighty interesting nonetheless. Not going to do anything with it other than uh, what I already planned to do, but uh, certainly interesting. Last time we had those buy signals on the volatility index was just about a few weeks before the markets. Let's see if we get 2008 here. Uh, right before the markets. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Uh, yeah, last time we got those signals was right before the markets. <laughs> Very similar to where we are right now. Get your first pukage. You get a crazy ass rip back to the 21. This is when that VIX uh, starts to print the buy signals. 
Then we rolled over another 20% and made new lows. Do I think that's exactly what's going to happen right now just because we're getting a buy signal on the VIX? No. Interesting nonetheless. But there's your weekly watch list. Um, no individual stock picks here for you. It's going to come down to the indexes. So we'll go through it all here one more time. Bearish weekly squeezes. These bounces don't change that as long as we're under the 21. So have a look to short those bounces if we get back above the weekly mean. Different story. Your key levels to watch early next week. And these levels are key for the bulls and the bears. So if you're short or you want to get short, you want to see things fail here. If you're bullish, you want to see things break out here. For your SPY, it's going to be your, your, your cluster here. So 440 to 445-ish. You have the daily 200, the daily 21, and the hourly 200, which has been a brick wall. Crazy oversold. Crazy bounce. It's kind of been the pattern, so that's a key, key level. And then you have your weekly AEMA. Basically in the same spot, so that's a lot of resistance. So that's, that's a big question. Play this bounce into those averages, but then we got to step back and see, hey, is this, is this just another bounce into resistance before we make a new low? We'll find out, but that's the way I'm seeing it. Um, for the QQQ, same scoop here. You've got your weekly AEMA, your daily 21, and your hourly 21, all around that 350-ish and change. And then for the IWM, we're already at the hourly 200, so very similar right now to that bounce and that bounce there. And this also starts to line up around 205, 208-ish with your previous resistance. And previous resistance also lines up with the weekly AEMA. So if we fail here, look to short for the next flush to the downside. If we break here and get back above the weekly 21s, start to consider getting some longs on. And if we dip a bit at Monday's open, uh, or we open up kind of flat, there's a few trade ideas to potentially play, you know, whatever gas might be left to the upside, if in fact all this is is just a short squeeze. Understand I got no bias, though. Had a great time shorting this thing. Already nailed the IWM once. Try to nail it again here. But when you pick your spots wisely, you quickly get to a point where it can't get that painful. So if I got two profitable shorts on Comcast, a profitable short already on the IWM, profitable shorts on Nike, profitable shorts on Uber, I had one losing short uh, on HCA here. Good entry, but it ripped. Um, and then I've shorted the SPX a few times. Right? If you kind of get to this point in your last couple of shorts don't work, well, you know, this is kind of similar to you're playing the uptrend as long as it lasts. Making money, making, making money, making money, making money. And yeah, you probably give back a little bit when the trend breaks. It's just trading, guys. Short bounces into resistance until it stops working. And very quickly, you're going to be in a position where you've taken eight trades. Seven of them have, profited, uh, have been profitable. And if you have a little bit of give back, once the market goes bullish again, you did a good job here. So watch your weekly AEMAs. Watch your daily 21s, your hourly 200s. I think we got a bit more upside coming here. But as of right now, I think it's just a short squeeze. I think it's a bear trend bounce. So we shall see, y'all. We shall certainly see. But I do hope you have a good weekend. I am running scans here, but... Your best looking sector is energy. Everything else, if anything, is a mirror image of the S&Ps. So, kind of keeping it simple there. But keep an eye on those debit spreads. If we open up flat, if you want to try to play a little bit more pop to the upside. And hey, if you're in my mastery, we might look for something like 1% risk here. Something like a 348, 350 debit spread on the Qs. You know, say you risk 1% of your account here. Did I do that right? Yeah, 340, 348, max loss, max profit. What's the issue here? I'm doing a credit spread. There we go. So say you risk 1% uh, of your account. So you got a $100,000 account. 
you're going to risk a thousand bucks here. Say you got five percent of your account wrapped up in shorts right now. All right. So let's see. What's this look like? Uh, if we were to take this and catch a nice little pop here into the midpoint of the week, say into uh, Wednesday. I'm in the wrong month here. So say we catch a little paparuski here into uh, Wednesday. Well then, uh, if you can get your cues up towards that 350-ish. Hold on, y'all. I'm messing something up here. All right, let me correct this. What am I doing here? Hold on. February 28th. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong expiration. My bad. March 4th. March 4th expiration. There we go. Uh, March 4th, 348, 350. All right, risk 1% of your account here. Things of this nature, right? Out the money debit spreads. Targeting 350-ish on the uh, the QQQ. And then I think on the S&P here, you're going to target 440-ish. 440-ish, maybe a little bit more. So 440, maybe 445. Just things of that nature. But the key here, though, I think you try to take it into resistance. Then I think you try to gracefully... Uh, gracefully take your profits and then see how things unfold. So that is your weekly watch list, y'all. Weekly charts are bearish. Daily charts uh, are still bearish. But you get everybody trapped down here. It makes for one hell of a rip. So watch those levels I gave you there. I wish you all the best of luck this week. We'll be live Monday morning at 8.45 a.m. Eastern for some pre-market prep. But hopefully you find some video from uh, today's video. Jump into next week with no bias. If you got calls, have no bias. If you got puts, have no bias. 9.9 .9 times out of 10, your best bet is going to follow. Uh, is going to be to follow structure. Alrighty. Always appreciate y'all watching. Go on and uh, decompress here a bit before we get back to it next week. All right. Talk to y'all soon.